In the last section, we wrapped up our album schema, and so now we're gonna go over some solutions for the artist model. The tricky thing about the artist is to keep in mind that it needs to have a sub-document collection of albums inside of it. So let's get started on the artist. Again, I want to remind you that it's really, really important to make sure that you have identical property names to everything that I have. So in the case of something like years active, or net worth, or label name, make sure that the second word in there is capitalized. If you don't follow the same property names, the client side application isn't gonna work correctly. Okay, so let's open up our code editor. I've got my album schema, and I'm going to flip over to the artist.js model file. So I'm gonna take out the to-do inside of here, and at the top, we will start by importing or requiring in a couple libraries. First, we'll grab Mongoose, of course. So here's Mongoose. And then because I need to get a reference to the album schema so that I can set up my sub-document collection of albums, I'm going to pull in the album schema that we just created. So I'll say const album schema require album, like so. Finally, I need to make a schema inside this file. So I'll say const schema mongoose.schema. Now this is another file that's going to end up looking very similar to the uh, user model that we just created in the last project. So inside of here, we'll start off by defining a artist schema, and then we'll give it some number of properties. So again, we're gonna go through all the different properties. I'm gonna give you kind of my take on what the type should be. If you have any questions about what the type should be, always feel free to ask me a question. The, I definitely, again, kind of threw you out on a limb on one of these properties as well, where you might have had a little bit trouble deciding what to name it. So we're gonna go over the tricky one inside of here as well. Okay, so we'll start off with the name. The name, I bet you could guess, it's gonna be a string, right? Like we've uh, been working with a name for Joe all the time, uh, Joe is definitely a string. Next is the age. So notice that this is not like a born at date, this is just the raw age. Uh, meant to be intended as like years of age. So for this, we're gonna say number. If it was something like date of birth, which probably would have been a little bit more realistic, we could have gone with a date value here, but because it's just a, supposed to be their age, we're sticking with just a number. One thing I do wanna say about the age is, is that recording the age is probably a poor choice on my part. And the reason for that is that, let's say like one year goes by, we would have to somehow come through all the different artists that we have and like increment them at some point in time. And because everyone has a different birthday, uh, it'd be kind of challenging to figure out when we should increment their age. But I think you get the idea. Next are years active. So this is supposed to be how many years this artist has been producing music. Given that's a number of years, well, yep, probably number is gonna be a good uh, solution here as well. Now years active definitely suffers from the same kind of issue as age, where the artist is probably active starting on like, you know, November 1st of 2010 or something like that. And so we would really, in reality, have to know ex their exact start date. So like active since would have been a better property here. But again, I wanna keep it just a little bit simple in this re regard. So we're just going with a years active of a number. All right, let's check out how we're doing down our list. Okay, next one's image, genre, website, and so on. So the image, this one's gonna be very similar to the uh, image that we were just working with inside the album as well. So again, this is not a actual image file, like a JPEG or something like that. It is a URL to an image. So again, we're gonna go with a string. Then the genre, this would be like rock, classic, hip hop, pop, you know, whatever it is people listen to, I don't know. Uh, so, probably gonna be a string. Next, the artist website. Now, we've kind of already talked, spoken a little bit about like URLs in the case of images. So just the same way, our website should probably be a string as well. Our net worth, which is how much this artist is worth. Well, again, we spoke about this with albums. Dollars or, gener or currency is best represented by just a strict number. So we'll go with just like, you know, the number of dollars that they have. Now, the situation with network, net, excuse me, net worth and revenue on albums, you've been hearing me say like, oh yeah, it's been currency, like dollars, right? 
in a multi or a global type world where you have an international application where you might be working with many different types of currency, it would really be worth requiring or uh, annotating the type of currency this is, possibly as like a separate property. Alternatively, you can have like a global understanding that all the currency values in your application might be like US dollars or you know whatever appropriate currency. I'm definitely making the assumption throughout my entire schema that this is going to be US dollars for all currency that you see. All right, back on track, the label name. So this is like the company who is producing or managing this actual artist. We could definitely have a case for a separate collection of labels here or a sub document of the label who manages this artist. But because I'm specifically saying the name of the label as opposed to like the um, name of the label, uh, their managers, uh, the years that the uh, label has been in existence, all that kind of stuff, because we're not recording that, we're just recording the name, I think that is 100% reasonable to just say the string of that label's name. Okay, so let's check out our schema again. We're down to two of the more challenging ones. So first, retired. So retired is meant to indicate whether or not this artist is currently like, you know, not retired, like still developing music of some sort. So this is kind of like a yes or no question. Is the artist retired or are they not? So it's kind of like a Boolean of sorts. And so this is another type where I really threw you out on a limb and we have not spoken about this type in particular just yet. So to express a Boolean here, like true, they are retired or false, they are not retired, we get the Boolean type. So the Boolean type is gonna say, yep, retired, or no, they're not. Again, I apologize for throwing you out on a limb without giving a lot of discussion about this. On future sections, when we're gonna you know, go through some of these other things where that include some topics I haven't spoken about, I'll be sure to link you some, to some documentation ahead of time. But for this first one, I kinda wanted to just really have you go through a little bit of a struggle. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, last property, albums. This is going to be a sub-document collection. We've gone through that previously with users and posts. So a artist will probably have many albums. So I'd expect this to be an array and it's going to be using the album schema. Whew. Okay, so hopefully that's a little bit enlightening on all the different types that we have inside of here. I, you know, I definitely mentioned a lot of these like say net worth label name, age, and years active, definitely debatable approaches here, right? Like we could have definitely gone different direction here, but that's absolutely part of what, what learning about Mongo and databases in general comes down to. It's all about having some insight or design or plan ahead of time on how you think this data is gonna behave and change over time. So that's definitely part of, uh, you know, it's up for interpretation. I think that's what I'm trying to say. So last thing that we're gonna do inside this file is take this artist schema and create a model out of it. So remember, when we have a schema that represents a collection, which we do in this case, we need to actually turn it into a model. So underneath the schema, we'll say const artist is mongoose.model. It's going to be an artist, and we're gonna pass in the artist schema. And then finally at the bottom, do not forget this extremely important line of code. We're going to be sure to export the model that we just created. Okay, so I think that's it for our first two models inside of here. Let's continue in the next section and we're gonna start working on all of the different queries inside of our application.